Day well, day well. Welcome, welcome everyone today to Cheism Live. I was not able to join you last week because I was terribly under the weather. Mm. But you know, as God has a purpose for my life, I am here again, taking the opportunity to be grateful for the uh, opportunity to inhale and exhale and be comforted in your presence today. Thank you all for being here. For those of you who are already here with us, thank you for being here. Let's see who we have here so I can welcome you to the program. Uh, let's see. We have, um, okay, we're kind of having a little, I don't understand this. Uh, every time you have a, a program, you have this kind of challenge. But anyway, uh, for those of you who are here, I'd like to thank you so much for being here with us today. The topic of discussion is Abakulo. But before I say anything about that, I just want to uh, let you know that Dibia Ochoaja, Yudi Onyoha, is not feeling very well. So consequently, he's not going to be able to join us today. But you know, she he's with us in spirit and we do nothing but wish him uh, good health and hope that he does much better very soon. Um, Sometimes, you know, we just have to take the time out because, you know, we just like to be in it every minute of the day. But sometimes you just have to say, OK, OK, I got to take a break. So today, uh, Yudi, Yudi is here. Thank you, Yudi. They will. At least we know that you're able to kind of listen in. Um, yes, you are under the weather and we know that you're going to come out of it just like I did last time. We know you're going to bounce right out of it. I have, um, let's see who else we have here with us. And um, uh, let's see. Uh, D uh, uh, D I think it's a DOCC says, uh, welcome, UD, and, and rest up. Rest up. That's what you must do. That's what we must all do when we're under the weather. It's not the end of life. It just means that uh, God is trying to tell us to take it easy for a little bit. And um, I don't understand what uh, StreamYard is doing. It's trying to tell me to upload something I'm not interested in uploading. And so it's kind of blocking my view. I hope you're not, uh, your view is not blocked either. But nonetheless, that's what I'm dealing with here. So anyway, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we always start everything we do with a short prayer. And I'm going to offer that at this time. Uh, ki ho blani like patraka ko bru no so mama ko wani le site na kan were hu he situ gwa ro be ne bi gbi i say let every way of our lives be light every single day of our lives be light 
and all of our acts be crowned with good. And may the world prosper because you're here. Prosper because of us now and forever. And so it is. I, I had a conversation with a gentleman yesterday. He was very anxious about uh, the coming year. He doesn't know what he's going to do this coming year. You know, he has challenges with his uh, wife and he has challenges with uh, his oldest uh, daughter who has, uh, who's on drugs and, and um, he just doesn't see a good future come, you know, come next year. But what I want to say to you, if you have that kind of anxiety, slow down. You're still in the moment. You're still here. Don't worry about what's going to happen next year. Next year is not here yet, though that's where we're going to go. And the topic of today is Abakulo, cleaning up, cleaning up the past so that you can view the pres uh, the future. However, while you're in the present, you have to do what you can to clear the present so that you see fit when the new year comes for you to clear the past and prepare for the new year. Now, remember, we say it all the time here. You are one with Shineke. You and Chineke are connected. And as long as you have that connection, there are just certain powers you have, <laughs> if you want to call it powers. But there are just certain things you can do because God can do it. Chineke can do it. So if that energy is being passed on to you, that means that you can do a whole lot of things. And you must be grateful and praise. And, and, and if peace is what you find, just ask for peace. Ask Chineke that's right next to you. Una chiso. I want peace in my life. But you see, you have to work with Chireke for peace to be a part of your reality. To keep peace on your mind, you must move your thoughts towards peace. You can have peace when you're focused on disturbances. You're focused on bad things that may have happened, focused on anticipated bad things to happen. Peace only happens to those who think peacefully, who make peace part of their repertoire, okay? And today I am recommending that if you find, just like this gentleman is, if you find yourself anxious at this moment, talk to Chineke. Talk to Chineke. If you think you are a ticking bomb just waiting to explode, you're just on the verge of going off, talk to Chineke. All of these anxiety add to your stress. And you keep piling more on top of the other. This stress comes in, you say, oh my God, and here comes another one. You keep piling it. But as long as you don't know that you have the ability to get rid of the stress, it's just going to keep piling. And I said, matter of fact, here's what's so beautiful about Chineke. When that stress is so, almost too overwhelming, boom, something miraculous happens to take you out of that stress. Something you're not even expecting just happens. So expect good so that good will find its way to you. Peace will find its way to you. Because, listen, if you're looking for anxiety, oh, it will find you. If all you're thinking about all these negative thoughts, it will find you. But remember that God has a plan. Chineke has a plan for you to turn all your challenges to success. But step into the arena yourself and guide what direction you're going to go. If you want to go right, Chineke will walk right with you. If you want to go left, Chineke will walk left with you. Wherever you want to go, Chineke is there to uphold what you seek. If only not choke off for what you seek, so shall you find. Okay? So today I'm asking you, pour out your supplications with joy and thanksgiving in your heart because we know that your prayers will be answered because where you are is that power to make these positive things happen. Now that's not to say that negative things will not happen. Of course they will happen. Because that's what being alive is. All those things help you to build your muscles. You know, that's what challenges do. So you're going to find that. But the important thing is don't spend this upcoming, uh, uh, before this year becomes what it's supposed to be, just whining about the possibility of, oh, things are not going to work out. If things didn't work out this year, it doesn't mean it won't work out next year. But distress right now, decompress right now. Don't take all this negativity into the new year. Don't take this misplaced um, uh, anxieties to the new year because it will follow you. And that's why we say, Abakulo, clean up, 
Abakulu. I remember during um, the new year, my, my mother would pick up a broom and line us all kids up. And then she'll go from one room to the other. She's sweeping, sweeping, saying Abakulu, all the negativity. Abakulu, go to the back. We're cleaning you up. We don't need you. We're going into a new year. We don't need you to come into the new year with us. So do not spend any more time this year focusing on the negativity. What you want to do is say, okay, here are, so, this is where I am right now. I'm just going to clean up all of that because I don't want that mess coming with me into the new year. Don't do that because it will follow you. It will follow you. The new year, all those negative things that you drag, it's like carrying having a luggage. If you're going on a trip and that trip is the new year, Everything you put in that luggage is going with you. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And so if you're fo focused on all these negative things that are happening, or you're just so anxious about them, think about that luggage you're dragging with you into the new year, 2024. Leave it in 23. Take the positives. The negatives will find you soon enough, but don't open the door for them. Don't drag them along with you. Just think about all those positive things that will help you have a good life in the new year. Those are the things you take with you. Now, it may sound like it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's too simple, it's simplistic. Yes, perhaps it is. But the important thing is that you are in charge of your life. You are in charge. What you seek, so shall you find. What you want to go with you is what's going to go with you. Everything negative you drag along with you it will go with you. So just, just think about those positive things that you want to take with you. It doesn't mean that the negative things have been solved just because you ignore them. No, 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 no. That's not the thing. But the most things that you want to focus on are those positive things that you want to happen. While you're here right now, work on the negatives and see how far you can go. But as, so, as soon as that clock rings, 2024, Strikes, rather. 2024, it's time for you to move on. It's time for you to move on. There's no need for you to drag that luggage with you. Open it up, clear it up, make sure that the only thing you pack are positive things. And if those negative things follow you into the 2024, then you deal with it at that time. But don't anticipate all this negativity for the next year. You mustn't do that. Now, let's be honest. Many of us have all these goals. As we're approaching 2024, you know, we're reflecting on, okay, uh, the, this is, uh, uh, I made this New Year's resolution last year. Did you meet those aspirations? Did they work out for you? If they did, congratulations. Some people actually make resolutions and they follow it through and it works for them. And if it does work for you, good for you. We applaud you. We certainly applaud you if it worked for you. You know, 80% um, of all of the New Year's resolutions fail, according to the News and World Report. It does fail. And we're talking about all over the world. People, you know, people just make all these um, resolutions and they don't always work. But you have to ask yourself, why? Why does it work for some people? Why is it that some people, this new, this 2024 is going to go exactly as they want? But some people may not have that luck. What is it that will keep you from getting to where you want to go? There are certain specific things that cause you problems. Pay attention to what I'm saying because it may happen this coming 2024. This Gregorian New Year. Your goals have to be, in other words, if you want something in 2024, write it down and know exactly what it is. People just have a tendency to just throw all these goals out there. I want this, I want that, I want that. It's not going to happen if it's not clear and concise. Why are you making those goals? You must be clear why you're making those goals. Why are you setting those goals? Why is it important to you? Why do you want it to happen? And if 
these goals that you are setting will impact your life from then on and make sure that it's clear. Because if you're just throwing things, and we tend to do that, you know, we just say, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. It doesn't work. It doesn't work because you did not think it through. So I'm telling all of you, get a piece of paper. Write down what it's going to mean for you. Abakulu, what you don't want to take with you, clean up. If the goals of last year did not work, what caused it not to work? Don't take that so mess to the new year. Clear up. Abakulu, clean it up. Clean it up. See what didn't work, what caused it not to work, and clean that up. Because if you take it to the new year, guess what? You're going to have the same problem. Now, like I said earlier, sometimes it sounds like what I'm saying is, oh, it's, 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 it sounds like it's an easy thing to do and it's not really an easy thing to do. Yeah, perhaps. But just remember, there are some people who are successful. There are people who are definitely successful. And if you're not one of them, you're doing something wrong. So that's why I'm saying, make sure you know what it is. And it doesn't have to be a whole bunch of stuff. You don't have to write a whole bunch of stuff. You know, I got to do this. I got to. No. Hopefully your life has a little bit more longevity so that you don't have to pile everything in one year. If you have a clear goal or two or three specific goals you want to achieve this coming year, go after those three goals. Don't set 15, 20, 30 goals. You're not going to achieve them because they're not really thought out. And you may not have what you need to get them going. So that's one reason why a lot of people are not successful. You know? Um, and, and then you have individuals. And that's another thing. You have to avoid those people. See, your best friend is Chineke. So if you have a goal, sit down and talk to God. Talk to Chineke and say, this is what I want. See? What you want, if it's a positive thing, you will get it. If it's positive, you'll get it. But your best friend is Chineke. For those of you who don't know, that's your best friend. Because not does not judge you. Chineke doesn't judge. Instead, a support system. Chineke is not a spirit that you, you have to be afraid of. Because everything you're doing, Chineke sees it. So you don't have to be afraid. Is he going to see or is she going to see or whatever, you know? No. Right where you are, Chineke is. And for those of you who think it's Chineke doing all these things, no, you're doing it. You're doing it. And you're making the choice to do things that are not productive. But if you know that the presence of Chinook is right there, then sit and talk about what your plans are, what you want to achieve, and never, ever listen. That's another thing, why your goals fail. You listen to those who tell you you can't do it. But I told you you couldn't do it. So don't do it. I told you, I tell you you can't. So you don't do it. So you must not ever listen to anybody who tells you what you can or cannot do. You just go ahead and do it. The next thing is once you make a lot of decisions about what you're, or, or you set the goals for the next year, if you do too many, you become overwhelmed. And when you are overwhelmed, when things are not going for very well, these, these are best practices, what I'm sharing with you. It's nothing new. A lot of people are aware of this. But the only thing is that maybe you're not aware of it. You know, any time that you have made up your mind that your life is going to take a go in a direction, you will find it's a special it's quite scary. And it's almost like you're leaving yourself and trying to be something else that you're not. And what happens is you've got a whole bunch of things you want to do in the new year. And unfortunately, what happens to you 
is that you've just you've you've bitten more than you is it what they say you've bitten more than you can chew and we do that you've bitten more than you can chew so if you are planning for a good new year curtail how much you put out there that you're going to do so that you can actually achieve them so that you don't get frightened and on uh uh uh, overwhelmed. I think uh, I can bring in Dibia Chedozier who can add to this conversation. Hello, Dibia. How are you? I wasn't sure if you were going to uh, join us today. How are you? Yeah, doing? I'm fine. Uh, I, I thought. Yeah, I thought uh, we were not meeting today anymore, so I left our uh, hometown. Uh, no come meeting close of a uh, uh, meeting end of year party oh really i sent you an email you probably didn't get it earlier yeah i, I, I got it i just had to i had to take time out to come so that even though it's a uh, 15 minutes i could spend with you yes the, today is going to be just one hour because on um, uh, ud is not well oh he's not well yeah so he's yeah. not with us today yeah i was talking nope. about uh, I was talking about Abakulo. Abakulo is our, uh, I don't know where, if, where, where you're from. From what part of Ibo land are you? I'm from Misukwa, just Abia State. Okay. I, I, I don't know if you guys have that word, but Abakulo is um, to clean up, to clean okay. up, to clean up the past before you enter the new year. I talked about the fact okay. that when we were young, my mother would, would, you know, run around the house saying abakulu, 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 you know, all the negatives, we're going to sweep you out. We're not going to take mm -hmm. you to the new year. Mm -hmm. And oh. a lot of people make a new year resolutions, but they are tied to what happened in the past. And sometimes they take yeah. that to, with them mm -hmm. to the new year. You know, instead of doing that abakulu, cleaning up, don't you don't want you know yeah. you can't solve everything in one year, mm. particularly no, when no, you no, set no. your goal too high. Mm. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on that? Oh, uh, my my thoughts on that is that uh, I think usually now we are doing it in December, but our New Year is usually that August time, and that's when mm. that is done. Uh, I don't, I, I can remember with a very faint memory that my mother used to talk about it, but Abakula is not what she calls it. There's another name, I can't quite remember the name now. But I, I do remember that in Things Fall Apart, such, there's such a ceremony where, mm -hmm. and that's when uh, everybody in the community meet, and then they have a special, uh, 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 the rituals they do, they have a special tie. They tie some leaves together. They make their uh, wishes for the coming year. And when they make such wishes, they bring them together. And then after prayers, they march on the, uh, on the leaf, meaning that they have marched on what was bad and gone for the past year. And, they were, and then they cross over to the new year. Uh, that's a sort of thing that was done, uh, rituals that were done to usher themselves in into the new uh, uh, farming, a new season uh, after the thirteenth new month. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and, the, and... so the question mm -hmm. of New Year is not is is it's not foreign to us. It's something that we are used to. We had a concept, but we mm -hmm. counted thirteen lunar months, not twelve calendar months. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's the little I know mm -hmm. about that yeah yeah and, and, and the focus that what I was trying to talk to people about is to know that if, if you if you plan what you want your next year to look like okay without the baggage of last year all right yeah. you do much better that's not to say that negativity will not follow you because that's part of human you know our humanness it will follow you sure. but if sure. if you wish and I of what you wish for yourself in the new year is all that you must aspire for in the new year so sure. when those negativity catch up with you you can deal with it now before the new year actually arrives you can actually start cleaning up 
what is left for this year, something that you didn't do, you, you know, the, the promise you made to yourself, you know, at sure. the beginning of the year, well, you didn't sure. meet it and a new year is catching up with you. Well, whatever it is, you can clean up, right? Clean up. But yeah. mentally, think about all the positive things you would like to see next year, you know, because, sure. you know, what you want, ask to take it forth. So let me ask you this question and, and, and looking at it from, uh, uh, from Igbo perspective, African perspective, you know, do you think that perhaps many individuals fail because some of the aspirations they've set for themselves is too high? And even though we're supposed to set high aspirations, but do you think that the reason why many fail has to do with the fact that those aspirations are way too high? Well, I think aspirations should be tamed. Uh, that's why our people practice moderation. And you, you, in certain aspirations, you should be realistic. Because in actual fact, I mm -hmm. hope you can hear me well. Because in actual fact, yeah, I can hear you. Ceremon yeah, ceremonies are to remind us more of our mental state. But if uh, the mistake most people make is that they think that such ceremony will open up new vistas for them. Mm -hmm. Yes, you need to do projections, but you have to be realistic. You have to examine the factors on ground. You must know the facts on ground. You must do your feasibility study. You must do your evaluation. Then you crisscross your goals and aspirations with what you have on ground. Then there must be strategy of how to achieve. Mm -hmm. The most that prayer can do is to open up opportunities. But if you don't seize upon those opportunities, then they don't materialize because mm -hmm. the spiritual cannot do the job of the physical. Yes. And that is why the spiritual engender the physical. Mm -hmm. And as we're in, a, as we're here, uh, seated, and this program is going on, we are in a K and a four, in the sense that mm -hmm. a K is uh, a four is a container for a K, and our body is a container for our spirit. And so, the aspirations we do when we do the ceremonies what we need to do is to put ourselves in the right state of mind, generate positive energy, and be realistic in our goals and aspirations, then map out timeline on how to go about those goals and aspirations so that we map out and say, okay, in this year, from this month to this month, I will aim at this. This is how I'm going to go about this plan. And then, mm -hmm. uh, like you see, you know, Urimage, uh, Urinabo, that, and then mm -hmm. that is to say where you find the sign 2112. Uh, that 2112, what I is telling us is that when you are calculating, your head must be calculating several ways which you can achieve, uh, achieve your goals, several ways. You don't have to limit yourself to several plans. We have a plan A, B, C, D, and uh, so on and mm -hmm. so forth to achieve one particular aspiration so that when you are blocked, you are blocked. You should expect obstacles. Obstacles are part of life. Even mm -hmm. to go kick out there myself, it's, it's a face that obstacle mm -hmm. to bring, to, you have to overcome. Mm -hmm. It's there in every tradition. So it's not mm -hmm. miraculous or magical the way we think. Life without struggle would not be sweet. We would not be able to yeah. appreciate our successes. So what mm -hmm. we need to do actually is to set timeline and plan on how to go about these goals and aspirations. Then break them in break them atom atomistically and start mm -hmm. from the simplest to the complex. If you start mm -hmm. from the complex to the simplest, then you will now risk uh, failing. Because if you don't mm -hmm. accomplish the complex, to go back to the simple becomes difficult. Or by that mm -hmm. time, you have spent the little fund you have. And so you become mm -hmm. disoriented. So you always take it for piecemeal, yes. you know, atomistically, piecemeal. So you struck, you have to structure. You have to plan. And then when you plan in your head, if possible, you put it on pen and paper. When you evaluate it, you look at the factors on ground, you gather information, and on a daily basis, you make sure that you, are on, you have the correct information. Because if you don't have the correct information, then you may be operating on illusion. That is a fact on ground.
So mm -hmm. it is when you have the correct information that you can meditate on them. You can pray on them for opportunities to open up. And then you see the opportunities. You have already prepared yourself. Then you seize mm -hmm. upon the opportunities and they become realities. But if we just plan and pray and go to sleep, well, we may just mm -hmm. end the year, another year the way we ended the former one. Yes, yes. And you know something else that I think impacts our ability to make concise uh, or at least follow our, uh, the plans that we've laid for the next year. Some of the things that make it difficult, I think, is because we look at how far other people have come. We compare ourselves with sure. others. We become impatient. You know, how come that person That's did true. it and I can't? You know, and That's once true. you do that, you know, you, you fail to now focus on what your plans are. Just like you said, take your time, you know, map it out. Yeah. You know, but you stop yeah. mapping it out, start looking at why is that person making it? And I'm not look, Chineke will always sure. meet you where you are, okay? Sure. Not where he or she is, not where other people mm. are, but where you are, yeah. you know. So sure. you are part of you know, you you are part of your own growth or lack thereof. So sure. you, you cannot see based on how far somebody else has gotten, you know. No. You know what they say, misery loves company. Sure, sure. They say misery loves company. Sometimes the people that we see who are making it, we get upset, right? And we don't want them sure. to make it and leave us behind, right? So we get dissatisfied. Yep. We focus now on how to bring them down, how to make sure they stay with us where we are. You know, those are some of the challenges of moving forward, of being having a successful year, new year. You know, because mm. you just focused on the wrong things, you know, just focused on the wrong things. And then what happens in the middle of all your confusion, right? You lose sight of where you even started. You lose sight of where you started. You know, you can be going, you can be going uh, uh, on one road, you know, that uh, you're trying to get to a green road, right? All right. You, sure. you through Abani, right? Then you meet somebody who's going through uh, another road and you follow them, right? Because now mm. you're following them following the right la route you mapped out for yourself now you're following sure. someone else's to see where they are going you know what i'm saying sure and then if, mm. if you get there you find that they've made it or maybe their their own path was the right path for them yeah but it wasn't for you then you mm. you lose you become impatient right you become impatient pushing what sure. you came uh, you started mm -hmm. thinking about doing then you know you feel mm -hmm. the obstacles, and in yeah. the process you find that your goals are not manifesting, and they're taking sure. you a long time to achieve, and you may not even find them worthy anymore. You know you, you don't mm -hmm. want to do them anymore. But the only reason why you're not doing them is because you have forgotten how you started, where you started, and where you're going. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but if you don't abandon what you have said, the goals you have set for yourself for the next road, you will find yourself exactly where you want to be. If you don't sure. abandon, you know, what you mm. started with, you know, mm. I know a lot of people who started this is my goal. I am going to go to college. I'm going to go to college today. Or I'm getting married this year. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But it always seems like that plan goes awry. Okay. Mm. Because you abandon it. You abandon it. It didn't mater materialize when you wanted to, wanted, wanted it to. Instead of reevaluating your process, then you decide, ah, this is not working. Then you start another one, you know. Mm. Uh, then you just find yourself uh, uh, starting a whole new process, all right? Mm. A whole yeah. new bunch of ideas and goals, yeah. right, right? And you find mm. that you can't achieve those anymore. And that's why yeah. by the end of the year, you find that you are exactly where you started, you know, mm -hmm. you're exactly where you started, you know, because you, you just didn't have focus. And then impatience, impatience is, is, is simply one of the worst things you can do. You have to, to be impatient. You must put yourself in a position that if you find it's not working at the moment, then just extend the time that is necessary to make it happen. Not just quit. You know, there are mm. people who, because I just, you know, it's just not working. Instead of saying, mm. okay, well, let's see. Uh, this is not working. Well, what can I do to improve it? Then we just 
quit because Joe Blue over there did it at the same time I did it, and they won and I didn't. So it must not be a yeah. good thing. To so fight. what? So, so what? What's wrong with me? Why is God not blessing me? Why is blessing other people? That's yeah, right. that's why. That's why Orina uh, Orina Abba says, focus with your head, and as you focus with your head, let yeah. your head devise means processes and that of achieving your aim then as your head is working your leg must be moving with your head then yes. your heart and your stomach must be fixed because you can't have you can't pursue two rats at the same time uh, and then what matters here is consistency first you have to convince yourself of what you want to do that's why you have to evaluate the totality of the situation so that's what i will go for and that's realistic i'm going to achieve it then map out a timeline the timeline may not be one year. We are the only ones that want to achieve immediately. Mm -hmm. There's what you call forethought. Forethought is that you project three years, five years, 10 years, you begin to work on a project that will materialize, materialize some of part of it will materialize in, ten, in three years, in mm -hmm. five years, the major part of it materialize in 10 years or even more. And then you work towards it patiently, yes. consistently. And you discover that as you focus on that, people get to know you for that. And once people get to know you for a particular service, yes. then they begin to patronize you. And so that is why you must have your own focus. Even when you are following other people, what have you to sell? Because you cannot be an island. You have to follow other people. Yes, for instance, now, those of us who are in the academics, we have common school of thought, like those you call uh, Afro-phenomenologists, a uh, purity school, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, if you are just jumping about, attending conferences, helping others without having developing your own perspective yes. of purity school, then you'll just be like the crowd. You're following the crowd. But mm -hmm. if you develop your own perspective, you write on it, you develop it, you are known for it, then when people ask, okay, we want to invite somebody on African, they say, oh, that particular person, his perspective is unique. Then when they, you are invited, you yes. deliver your lecture. Some yeah. people begin to like it. Out of 100 people, 10 may like your, your view. Out of 1,000, 100 may like your view. Yes. And when they begin to invite you, you just discover that you are on song. But the thing there is that you have to draw your own perspective, define it, develop it, work consistently towards it. And sometimes we must have life projects. Just uh, like mm -hmm. the cheesing project is a project that you had had your uh, yeah, uh, 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 Kyo and had it. You, you you dreamt about it and you are working towards it. It's been a live generational project, and within it, it's there are other projects you have within it. So you can have a major project within which you have mm -hmm. some other little little other projects. And then within those little little ones, you are just going to achieve why you work towards mm -hmm. the main one. That's a generational one. That one you do is you stop yes. and other people continue with yes. it. But you must have other plans within plans. If you are not able to do this, then you just yes. discover that like, you, like an animal, you wake up, you eat and go back to sleep. That's not a human being. And it is more mm -hmm. tasking these days in the mm -hmm. age of uh, globalization with the new or emerging technologies. Before you say Jack Robinson, you discover that idea you have some other person also has it. Or some other. And so if you are not fast enough, then they beat you to it. Or if you don't know how to define mm -hmm. your, your own perspective, work with a very uh, uh, crack team who are honest, focused, then you discover that you are working with the wrong team. All these are one has to define in this age where there's high level cultural competition. One has to be very focused, cautious. Yes. And very uh, then mm -hmm. move passionately passionately pursue his or her goals while you are also confidential on some matters yes 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 you know uh, th thank you so much you know good co good uh, uh, contribution there i also know one one thing that's very very critical uh in setting your goals for the new year is that you must know that just because you want to change, just because you have all these fancy goals, you may not be ready for it. You know, that sometimes they say, be careful what you ask Chineke to give you, because if you get it, 
you may not be ready to accept it. You may not be ready. You can even fail when good comes to you because you were not prepared to receive it. You see, so if you are interested in changing in, you know, in any way, you have to ask yourself, what am I ready for this thing I want? You know, that's why sometimes they say you have to be very, very careful what you say about somebody. You know, I'm, I'm so mad at you. I hope I'd never see you again. I hope you die. All that kind of stuff. Words are thoughts and thoughts are things. You see what I'm saying? So you be careful yeah. that you're ready for the change that you are wanting, either projecting on yourself or somebody else, okay? Chances are that if you are setting a new goal for yourself, all right, yes, you want to see something new, okay? You, you're not happy with where you are right now and you want to see something new. For even those who are successful, they want to see something new for themselves. But if you're not comfortable with what little that you have set for yourself right now, the bigger picture that you are painting for the next year is not going to materialize. It's not. Just like you said, you start small and start building. So you really need to know, I, I want all this change, but you need to know, first of all, you need to know what is this change that you want? What is it? What is this change? How does this new change you want compared to what, what, where you are, what you were? You know, what is the change you're looking for? Now, when, when, do, when do I anticipate this change to become a reality? What is it? When do I want it to become a reality? You can't just ask, what is this change? And you state what that change is, but you can't say when you want it to happen. Okay, you just verbalized what you want to see happen, but you don't know when you want it to, you want it to happen. And, and when you don't know when you want it to happen, you cannot act accordingly. You cannot push it. You cannot make it happen because you don't know when you want it to happen. You just know what you want to see happen but you don't know when you want to see it happen. And this change you want, where do you want it to happen at? Where? Where is it going to happen at? Those are the three questions mm -hmm. that I'll that we will say that causes uh, four actions. Why? If you don't have those together, okay, then you yeah. believe it or not, you're not going to have the necessary mm -hmm. Uh, uh, have what you need to be ready to make these changes happen you know so look there is no mystery in change there's no mystery in change because all of us want to change what that was not working there's no mystery everybody you know wants that but the difference is that those who want change and actually know what the change is when they want it to happen where they want it to happen and why they want it to happen those are the successful ones those of us now let me know let me not put myself in that uh, box. But those who want to see things happen, they know when they want it to happen, but they don't know where they want it to happen and why they want it to happen. Those are not going to be successful. So you, you must know your what, when, where, and why. Okay? So this new year that's coming, what is it you want? What do you want to see? And let me tell you, even the rich, even the billionaires have aspirations for even more. But the reason why they get more and more and more is because they have answered those four questions that some of us are still sitting and not sure. You know, we know we want something, but we're not even ready because to be ready, you have to ask those right questions so that when it does happen, when the change does become a reality, you are prepared for it. You know, so when you lack the connection, you're not motivated. You don't know what those things are. You don't know why you're trying. You want something, and when you want it to happen, and where it's going to happen, and why you want it, you you you're not going to be motivated. You're going to fail. You're not going to be dedicated to those goals that, that you're talking about. You're going to fail. You know. So, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, if I do remember, uh, when you are asking and praying for something, you must be ready with the necessary materials. If you don't, then what opportunity may open up when you least expect. And if you are not ready, it will pass you by. For example, there's someone in a, uh, uh, that's a bakery, the uh, owner of Lateran Assembly, told a story uh -huh. of a man who was praying to go abroad, to have a job abroad. But he didn't have a passport. 
And then in his office, there, there was a chance for three people to be sent abroad. And he, the, the, the chance came, and it, the, it would be in three days' time. In three days' time, they were to go. In that three days, he could not prepare a passport. And so that's how the opportunity passed him by. So when you are, are praying and then you are walking, always make sure that at every phase, the things you need are ready. Because if they are not ready, the opportunities will pass you by. And because we know there's competition, so the saying that uh, in a house where you have many children, uh, nature condones no vacuum. And so if you are not yes. ready, some other people are ready because there's competition. Yes. So you must always mm -hmm. be ready. And that's why you must be realistic. Tell yourself the truth. Mm -hmm. Don't aim mm -hmm. for what you cannot have at a time. And that's why you must cut your coat according to your size and approach the issue peacefully. That's why you must have long-term yes. projection and know when you are going to achieve certain things. When you have big dreams, then you must set them out in phases. And in yes. phases, maybe quarterly, that you know every year you calculate, this is how far I've come this year. The following yes. year and the previous year, uh, well, well, then I have to remind us that when we, uh, we, we, we pray and we try to uh, prepare ourselves for the new year, it does not mean that we throw away all that happened the previous year because the issue of year, yes. we are the ones that made it. The issue of year is artificial. The earth is rolling and rotating, yes. revolving and rotating. It has no gap stop of year, month, days. We are the one that began to count days, minutes uh, from seconds to minutes, minutes to hours, hours to days, days to week, week to month, month to years. That's our calculation. Nature does not know that. Animals mm -hmm. don't know that. Trees don't know that. And so when you are rolling over to the next yes. year, you must bear in mind that issue of year is the way we have planned our chart so that because we have lifespan right. and we are rushing and we have self-awareness of that's why we can chart what we want to achieve at the point in time. It does not mean we have to throw mm -hmm. away and say, oh, that year, I don't know, let's throw it away. I don't even want to remember it. You must calculate why. Investigate why you didn't succeed. So if you know why you didn't succeed, so how do you go about it the following year? Because if you just throw away the last yes. year and roll over the next year without the knowledge of next last year, then you run the risk of not even achieving the following year. And that's be the particular problem in Nigeria, governance. Each government wants to come and throw away what the previous government has done and then wants to start afresh. Yes. That's like, we're always going back to 1960 when we got independence. We're always, to say that yes. the previous government did nothing and you are not, there's nothing for you to stand on, means that you have to go back to 1960 to start from scratch. And so when you go back 60 years ago or 65 years ago uh, or 63 years ago, when you go back there, to how fast can you come to today reality? So because life is facial and incremental. So we have to understand the ordinance of life and the trajectories we have created ourselves and know how to plan and put in our own plan and achieve. If we don't do that, right. then we run That's the right. risk of always trying to start from scratch. And when that happens, we will always be frustrated. May we not be frustrated. Mm -hmm. May we not be. Maybe we, and we're not conditioned to be frustrated. We really do yeah. that to ourselves. Because there's always a different way of doing something. There's always a different way. And, and you know, in the Ibuna, I say, uh, that means if you're not good yeah, in one yeah. thing, you're good in another. You know, yeah. So you don't stress your life over what you're good in. You know what I'm saying? Maybe something that sure. you're looking for didn't work. Yeah, then all yeah. of a sudden you decide, well, that just is you know, what is yeah. me. Oh, we hold on. Huh? I just remember something now. I remember something yeah, now. You must know yourself. The starting point of success, master who you are. Because master all of that, us yes. are not fortunate 
and we are not fashioned the same. That is the story of the horse in Nina mm -hmm. and the tortoise. The horse co can run a uh, 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 kilometer, a matter of uh, minutes. It takes the tortoise several hours to do 100 meters. So the horse challenged the tortoise to a race. And the tortoise has, has accepted. Of course, the, the horse was convinced he will win. The tortoise, knowing itself very well, went and arranged other tortoises that, tortoises that were exactly like it and arranged them at face, face, face to the last point of the race. So at each time the horse was running, he sees the tortoise in front. He was running, he sees the tortoise in front. He will run and run, he sees the tortoise in front. Until he saw the tortoise at the close line. So it the, the horse collapsed. Uh -huh. Now, the, the, this is the issue of self-mastery. <laughs> it's the issue of self-mastery. Yes. So the turtle knows itself. He knows it's slow. So he devised a way of beating the horse. So there is nothing that That's is a disadvantage. Right. Everything that's an advantage is a disadvantage. All you need to do is master who you are and operate <laughs> by your own plane, your own trajectory. Yes. So to analyze that, there That's are right. some that you That's do not make more than 200,000 naira per month. There are some that make 2 million naira per month, 20 million naira per month. So if you make a 200,000 naira, 200, naira per month, what you do is to cut your coat according to your size. Don't begin to aim That's big right. like those who earn 2 million or 20 million. Say, why don't you floor, uh, why don't you for liquid them? What you should actually do is watch mm -hmm. them from a distance. When they are party, listen to them, gather some ideas from them, and plan yourself. Then tell your family, and then the, the first thing is that you do you call your woman, reach an agreement with her on how to uh, uh, to to go about the family. Then when you draw a trajectory, you now discover that okay, woman, woman, uh, let's just set up trade for you, and then we can eat from there. Then we can be saving fifty thousand naira per month. 50,000 naira per month at the end of the year, or let's have to be plan of uh, a plan of, uh, say, uh, two, uh, uh, five years. By five years, we'll have this. Then your trade can move high. Then we can now begin to eat from trade. And I uh, see we we are going to, uh, to factor the family on you. So you keep expanding her trade, and then you'll be making your 200,000. A time will come in five years that she's making enough for you to take money to feed the family, and then you invest your 200,000 Naira into savings. 200,000 uh -huh. Naira per month for one year is 2.4 million. And if you have a plan of 20 of 10 mm -hmm. years, that will give you 24 million. In that year, before that, you can set up in your company and say, okay, uh, you know what will happen, my wife? Let us move away from this Lagos. Let's move to the hinterland and let's move our business there. Let's go into agriculture. Let's plant. We rent a, a place where we can have land, maybe one plot, two plots, one acre. We rent it and we build our bungalow there. Then we use the rest for farming. Like all these oha, uh -huh, ogo, vegetables that sell, we plant here and we sell. At the end of the year, you discover you are making up to a million. Then you can save, you can save half a million or uh, even more than that. And then but you increase your destiny. Before you know it, you are you are expanding your farm. And those people who are earning 2 million, 20 million, they are busy riding speed cars and so on and so forth, going abroad for yeah. leaking. You are concentrated, you are building your wealth. In 30 years' time, you may find yourself having a 200 million naira. Why those other ones are in trouble? Yeah. That is the story yes. of the tortoise and the hawk. If you want yes. to run a race, you have to plan it and be patient. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, uh, that's one of the things I like about African, um, how we raise our children is with these proverbs, yeah. stories. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It has so much in it. If we pay, if they, sure. at, at the end of, you know, uh, when you're getting ready to be, when, when a parent is getting ready to tell a story, we say, OT, Ayo. OT, that means tell a story time. And the Ayo, the child yeah. will say, I'm ready. Mm. Uh, and then at mm -hmm. the end, you say takui, they say war. That means, did you hear? Yes, that sort of thing. Because in there, you know, I'm getting ready to teach you, you know, through story. 
not through a book, but are you ready? Yes, I am. I'm, and the child is intent and they're listening, you know? And then at the end of the day, then you say, did you hear it? Yes, I did. So the, ter the tertians uh, uh, and the horse, the story you told, many of us heard it from our, from, <coughs> from our parents when we were young, <coughs> you know? So there's always a message in these stories. So thank you for sharing that, reminding us of that story. And that is quite true about us as people. Know yourself. Now, I, I have to uh, ask you this. What are your thoughts on the fact that perhaps part of the reason why our goals and objectives are not met is because we're kind of stuck in our ways? You know, sometimes we've mapped it so well. And then if it doesn't go that way, if it doesn't go well, then we decide, you know, it's no good because we're stuck. We're not open for the possibility of new ways of doing something, you know. So just because you have your set way, people are stuck in their ways. You know that people are stuck in their ways. And, and it doesn't mean that the path that you have laid for yourself is not good enough. It just means that maybe you need more time, you know, for it to work. Or, you know, be open, be willing to try something new. But they are, so, you know, as I say, you can't teach an old fool new tricks. You know, they are people you can't teach new tricks. They're not willing to try something new. So they follow the same thing they did last time. They do, do it again the next year. And it's just like, just boomerangs, back and forth, back and forth. They never change. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, they, that's why I said, uh, from beginning, we we said you you mentioned it, and we we, we have uh, reiterated that uh, uh, like three times before now on this program. And uh, what we said is that you have to be flexible, dynamic. Yeah. Yes. Because we live in the, uh, our world is a world of forces, and forces are always in motion. And if forces are always in motion, they are always mutating towards higher level. And so you have to, that's why I said you have to understand the, the structure of the universe vis-a-vis -vis the structures we have created. These mm -hmm. structures we have created are not permanent. They are just structures within which you, you stand to, 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 to project and move. And so you have to be dynamic, you have to be flexible. Uh, so because our time is almost up, one adage that captures that in Ibo's you don't stand in a place to, up, to behold the masquerade. As the masquerade is moving from place to place, you also you move from place to place. Yes. That, but, but, but that does not mean you don't have a stand. The masquerade has a stand. You have mm -hmm. a stand. Mm -hmm. But as you are being flexible and dynamic, you must have a trajectory. You yes. must be open-minded. You must be learn, ready to learn new ways. And then you must know that the way to spirituality is practical. Mm -hmm. Prayer is a different thing. Being practical in life is a different thing. So when you pray, you must move to the field. And in the field, you must learn new tricks every day so that you add up to your old ones. You must be incremental geometrically. So that's mm -hmm. how to go about it. Yes. Thank you so much. You know, this time, I did, like I said earlier, uh, because there, we, uh, we don't have uh, um, DBRUD, you know, um, we usually s share the conversation. So the, today we just want to end it in one hour. And besides, you have somewhere you want to go. So I want sure. to thank you so very much for, do, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to step in here and share your wonderful thoughts with us. And I do want to thank those who have joined us or those who will join us because people play the video afterwards. You know, some people yeah. may be busy and then they go and play next one. So you know, what, what the message is, Abakulu, clean up the mess of yesterday. Don't take it with you to the new year. Be prepared. Plan, you know, what, what kind of change you want. You know, wh what is it? When do you want it? How are you going to get it? And why are you trying to get it? And if you just plan accordingly and give yourself time and be patient and work hard at it, Chineke walks with you. Whatever it is you want, you can besiege and you can beset it. And I know that you will get it. Over Sinile, or I know you need it. Go soon. Girl, you so soon. You who knows on a coco. Melu. Wherever you go, let nothing you touch be nothing but gold. Yagazino. Thank you so much.
They won. So, <laughs> they won. So, they won. I, I catch you next week. Hey. Yes.